Hey guys and welcome to this Legion Tower Defense 2 video guide. Today's topic are the splitting basics. You will learn how to use a split, how you can improve your split and why it does sometimes go wrong and sometimes works well for you and when to use it overall. If you're interested in more Legion guides, check out my channel, there you can already find a bunch of other guides. Now we can head right into the topic. The first question we want to talk about is, why do we split in general? The first and maybe most important point is that you want to minimize your value to hold a certain weight. It's pretty clear that you want to push as many workers as you can in the early, mid and late game to pressure your enemy. To do so, splits are an important factor. There are two reasons why you minimize the value by splitting the weight. First, it needs time for units to travel to the split on the other side of the lane and back, so you got the time aspect. The second reason is that the side where you place your most units, like your DPS units and your main units, will be able to clear its side even faster since they are only fighting against half the weight. In the same time, they only take less damage since only half the weight is attacking them, so you get a win-win situation. Another point to use splits is that you can pull tanks and units that run in front of the wave by using them. For example, if you can't afford your doppelganger or DPS units, hitting on a ram the whole time before it reaches the wave, you can use a split and pull the tanks beside and the DPS units will focus the wave first. Splits can also be used to give special units more time, for example fatalizers or doppelgangers. We had the time aspect already in point 1, but here we see it with different eyes. In this case it's reducing the incoming damage for our DPS units since only the half wave can attack them. And last but not least is that you gain wave control by splitting. If you know how you split a wave, what it should look like if you get sense, and of course there are sometimes some random pathways, but mainly they work like you can test them in custom, you know how you do on the next wave. So you know about you can get like 200 cent, you know which units you can afford with this and you can already imagine how you will be able to hold your wave, what you should build and how you could adapt your split to hold. Now we talked about the topic, why do we split? Now we will talk, when do we split? So one thing I might have mentioned in almost all my guides are the DPS units, like doppelgangers, fatalizers and kingpin. They are belonging to a very special category of fighters, since they are uh, more or less the carries of your whole build. This means that in most of the time you got one of these units, you want to build around them, so you want them to live the longest. At least this is how I do it in most cases if I use them. This is why you want them to get the buffs, you want them to live the longest because they will be the units that deal the most damage in your game and will clear the most units of course. Another very important aspect is that you do not want to split when you have AOE builds, like with pyros or death caps. This is really important. So if you got a split with an AOE build, like you got a bunch of pyros but split the wave, they will be only able to attack the half wave and in the same time the split will run behind the pyros and it will not be able to reach all the wave at any time anymore. This means that if you want to play a death cap or pyro build, you should be aware that splitting is not the best option you can do. Another thing are boas since they deal a bit of splash damage if they hit on the wave. There are some cases where you can use a split with them, but this is maybe too specific for a beginner's guide for splitting, so you could either test it in custom games how it works well, or I might even do a splitting guide for experienced players anytime soon. Then might be sometimes the case that you want only split on specific waves or on waves you get sense on because you will receive a tank or on wave 13 for example since there are very few units you almost always want to split on wave 13 um, to get rid of most of the damage. In the last spot I wrote down in the early game this means that 
almost all builds except Pyro and Deathcap or Honeyflower builds you want to split in the early game because there is the time you want to push the most workers. If you get ahead in the early game you, you're pretty likely to win the game. So try to get as less value to hold the wave and this requires splitting in the early game even more than in the late game. Now I will show you some in-game footage, um, how to split and what are the general rules of splitting. If it's too fast for you, just watch it the second time or test it in custom for yourself. Most of the players build their main units, their core bundle, on the left hand side. So if you split on the right hand side, on the same height, the fiend, which is standing for any tank that is running in front of the wave, will always go to the right side. Let us call this the strong side so you will know when I use this word again what it is. If you send two fiends now, they will split up in their value so one will go left and one will go right. If we now send three fiends or three tanks from the same kind, they will split obviously as following. Two will go to the right and one will go to the left. So they are always more on the strong side. But they will also split in their values. So if you send two snails and a fiend, there will be one fiend and one snail on the strong side, the right, and one snail on the left. The strong side will always receive the one unit more or more value or more medium in tanks. There is no effect whether you build on the left or on the right hand side. This means you can control whether you receive the tanks or not. But what if we build on the left side, but not on the first row, but on the second? So if we do so, the side, the strong side, will change. Now our left side will be the strong one. A fiend will now walk to the left side. And then the general rules hitting in. The second fiend will go right, the third left, and so on. To get rid of this change, we just place our split half a square up. Now the strong side will be on the right again. If we do the same experiment on the third row and split on the same height, we obviously see that the fiend will run to the left, so the left side is our strong side again. This is also happening if we place our split a half square up. Still the left side is our strong side. So we need to go one full square upwards, but the fiend will go to the right again. But you can already see that the split is not working that good anymore as before. We can generally say that this works if you go one row more to the right, you can go half a square up with a split and it works. This easy rule is now not that accurate anymore, since it gets random a bit. Overall, the splitting rule should also work for brutes and other units that walk in the middle of the wave. But this is not 100% accurate. So a brute is mainly going on the strong side if you only send one, but it might also go on the weak side because it's just behind the wave and if a split dies immediately, it might change. What I want to express is that the splitting rules I'll show you here are mainly for the tanks you send and that run in front of the wave. All other units that run in the wave or us that run a bit behind the wave and all long range damage dealers like lizards, cannoneers or shamans might not do the same as the tanks. An example therefore is that the lizards will mainly focus and target the weak wave. But there's no real rule, so it can happen that you send two lizards and one is attacking each side, but it can also happen that two are going on the weak side or two are going to the strong side, as you see in this example. We just talked about all the low cost melee units you can split with, like bone warriors, looters or buzz. Now we will get to polywalk, which is a ranged unit and which makes splitting a bit more tricky but also open some new techniques. The general rules are the same, which side is the weak side and which one is the strong one. Due to Polyvox range, the split will give you an extra amount of time. As you can see here, if you build them down the lane and a bit on the side, the units in the split run in this half circle 
which needs a lot of time. Just care that if you don't place all your DPS units on the most left side, they might get sniped by the split map. But this is already more than a beginner's guide for splitting, so polywork split is definitely something for experienced players if you want to go more into detail. Since there's no effect if you got ranged waves or melee waves, I will now show you which waves are special and might be a bit tricky. One of the things I see the most, even in high elo, is that people miss split wave 5. So they place all their units on the left hand side, but the Scorpion King will obviously run to the strong side since it is walking in front of the wave. If you don't want this to happen, that the Scorpion King goes right and your main units are left, you just want to cancel the split maybe for this one wave or place one tier 1 on the left hand side above your unit that the Scorpion King and the wave will head to the left. Second is wave 10. Wave 10 is only one unit and one unit will also go on the strong side. So it will go on the right side if you have splits on the same height. If you now get a send on wave 10 including some dinos and other tanks, the side the boss goes might change due to values and blocking of the units. If you don't want this to happen to hold the wave, you just might cancel the split for this one wave or again place one two unit in front of the left side that this will be the side your boss is heading. One last example that shows us that splitting on the same height is not always good is Aserias with a melee split. The Aserias range is so big that it might hit the units way before the melee units even can reach the wave. So if the wave is now activated, the melee units will run upwards and no one will focus the Aseria, so your split will be fully cleared and then all the units will head to the Aseria, which is not a thing you want to do. Placing the Aseria a bit more up and split a bit more down, you might want to test in custom how many squares you want to go down, um, will affect that the wave is now splitting again and half the wave will run to the split and the other half on the Aseria. Now you got all the basics you need to start splitting and improving. Of course, you will get better if you do them a lot, if you split a lot and train a lot. So you might not be the best in the first game you use splits. Let's sum it up now. You want to split with low cost melee units, like looters. Yes, I said atoms and protons are melee here. Bus, PV, Bone Warrior and Gargoyle. Gargoyle is basically the only tier 2 unit because all the others got some range. A special split unit is Polyvog because of its range. Splits get affected by the side you build on. And in the last spot you want to consider in advance if the split is for the full game or you want to sell it one time or don't need it anymore. This means if you are planning to build pyros and deathcaps in the late game you might want to split only with a few units or a few units and so you might just place a few units on the same height and the rest a bit more down the lane so you can only sell a few and have no split anymore. I hope I was able to help you with some splitting basics. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have a nice day and keep grinding.